In 1991, a 5,000-year-old frozen body was discovered high in the Italian Alps. This ancient archer would later become known as Uzi the Iceman. In previous videos, I showed you how to make an Uzi the Iceman style bow and arrows. In this video, I'll show you how to make an Uzi the Iceman style quiver using the same material he used more than 5,000 years ago. Uzi's quiver was made from the rawhide of a wild goat-like species called a chamois or a chamois. For my quiver, I will use the skin of an elk. To make rawhide, begin by cutting away all excess meat and fat. Then stretch the hide and allow it to dry till it is stiff and firm. The basic shape of the quiver was formed by folding the rawhide in half and then sewing up the edges. The pattern for the quiver can be cut out using a sharp piece of obsidian. If you look at photos of Utsi the Iceman's original quiver, you'll notice that I slightly changed the design of my quiver in this video. I did this to better accommodate my shooting style as I will be using this quiver for hunting. The basic design is the same, it is just a mirror image of the original quiver. Once the pattern is cut out, soak the hide in warm water until it becomes soft and flexible. Then fold the hide over on itself so that the edges line up with the hair on the inside of the quiver. The next step is to sew the edges of the quiver together using sinew thread made with a two-ply twist. Holes can be punched through the leather for sewing using an antler awl. When sewing on the bottom and side of the quiver is complete, turn the quiver inside out while it is still wet and flexible. Photos of the Iceman's quiver appear to look like smooth leather. However, hairs caught under the sinew thread stitchings suggest that the original quiver had hair on the outside. The original quiver had a flap that folded down and a second flap that folded over to help protect the fletchings of the arrows from moisture and damage. This second flap can be sewed on again using sinew thread. The inner protective flap also had several strips of leather sewn along its edge and as vertical and diagonal lines through the center. I'm not sure if these leather strips served a function or if they were merely for decoration. As the rawhide dries, it becomes stiff and rigid. You can make the quiver more flexible by working the hide back and forth. To reinforce the rawhide, Utsi attached a rod made out of hazelnut wood along the edge of the quiver. This rod may have been formed using his copper axe. After the bark is peeled, the ends can be ground smooth using a piece of sandstone. The hazel rod in Otzi's quiver had a groove carved along its length and had a series of holes drilled through it. This can be done with a flint drill which was found in his belt pouch. The hazel rod was attached to the rawhide quiver using a leather thong which was sewn through these holes. While Utsi was still alive, his quiver experienced some major damage and this hazel rod was broken into several pieces. It is unclear how he carried his quiver. For my quiver, I attached a shoulder strap made out of leather. A leather strap attached in this way allows you to carry your quiver on your back and draw arrows quickly.
Utsi also had a backpack, so he may have carried his quiver on his shoulder or his belt or carried it in some other fashion. Archaeologists discovered there are more than just arrows inside Utsi the Iceman's quiver. They discovered 12 crudely worked um, viburnum shafts that were in the early stages of the arrow making process. They also found two completed arrows. Um, his arrow style had three fletchings that were glued on with birch tar and then wrapped spirally with stinging nettle thread. They had flint arrowheads and were glued on with birch tar and sinew. And one of the arrows was a compound arrow with a foreshaft that is removable. In case you break the arrowhead, you can just put a new foreshaft and then you're good to go. They also found in the quiver a antler awl. Um, that is a useful tool for making this quiver, repairing clothing, a bunch of just day-to-day uh, -day tasks, and a bundle of sinew from the leg of a stag. And this sinew is used in making the arrows, could make a bowstring, and also was used in repairing tears in his clothing. They found a bundle of stag antler, which was crudely worked, short pieces. Um, these may have been for future arrowheads. And they found a bundle of two-ply twine that was twisted from the bark of a tree. And this may have been his bowstring. I included a little marble flat bead on his quiver. It wasn't originally on his quiver, but they did find it by his body. And it was the only uh, ornament uh, jewelry that they found. Everything else was practical tools.